Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's wonderful to be together. Great to be able to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're going to be turning through to the letter of Romans again and continuing our way in chapter 5. And I want us to look at verse 3 to 5 this afternoon. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another day. Thank you for your love for us. As we come and consider your word now, we pray that you would bless it to us. Help us to understand wonderful things in your word. Help us to see Jesus Christ. Help us to know Christ and him crucified. Help us to behold your love for us. And we pray that your spirit would work in our hearts, that we might know you and love you. That we might cherish you and follow you. And that our hearts might delight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're thinking about suffering today. Suffering. Suffering is a interesting topic to talk about in the West. And it's it's interesting because there's a lot of disagreement, mainly disagreement about how to get away from it. You see, in the West, our general view of suffering is that it is purely evil. A hundred percent, nothing good in suffering whatsoever. There are other cultures which wouldn't view it the same way. There are some cultures that would say suffering is just a part of this world and we must learn to ignore it. And so the, the goal is to live with suffering and yet not let it affect you. In the West, our default response to suffering is to run away, is to flee. And we can see that in some of the questions that often get posed to Christian speakers. It's very often when you look at Christian apologists, one of the questions they almost always get asked is, how can you explain the presence of evil and suffering if God is real? And they use that standard argument and they say, if God is all powerful and if God is all good, then why is there suffering? Now, the reason we ask that question is because of our view of suffering. Because we view suffering as an evil reality only that produces no good, then that question makes sense. But if, if suffering is not a pure evil, and if suffering produces something other than than evil, then that question begins to break down. In fact, I always find it very interesting that the argument is always engaged with on that same apologetic route of showing that God is, is a God who's in control and, and, stay, and yet isn't the one causing suffering and things like that. And I often just wonder, why don't apologists ask the question back, why is suffering an evil problem? What if your understanding is not breaking down on God, but is breaking down on your view of suffering? Maybe your problem is that you need a better view, a better theology of suffering. You see, we live in a world which, which panics about burnout, which panics about uh, dying, which panics about cancer, which panics about enduring through pain. Whereas previous generations of Christians just took it as a part of life. It was very normal to die young, to suffer horribly. When you had a problem, you didn't have anesthetic, so the doctor just cut a hole in your leg. But that's 
so far away from us that we we panic about having good rest. We panic about not doing too much. So how do we understand suffering then? If, as I'm suggesting, our culture and our worldview has lost the proper view of suffering, what is the right view of suffering? Well, Paul, Paul answers that question. He says in verse 3, we rejoice in our sufferings. Now that makes no sense to a Western mentality person, does it? We boast, we brag, we rejoice, we treasure our suffering. We count our suffering as something that is praiseworthy. If you say that, to a person who's suffering, are you not considered evil? If you say that to a person who's visiting you when you're suffering, would they not think you're insane? And yet that's what Paul says. How can he say that? Well, first, understand what Paul means by suffering. By suffering, Paul is referring to outward occurrences, outward occurrences that affect you. So he's not thinking, he's not speaking about uh, mental depression, though you could probably put this under that. He's not speaking of cancer of the liver, though you could put this under that. I think he's primarily thinking about persecution, outward pressures. He's thinking about the persuasion of the world to try and combat our Christian faith. I think primarily he's thinking about outward attack on the person. And so for some of you, this might be a very real reality depending on the country you come from. There are many Christians who live in the reality of what Paul is talking about right now. But I think even though Paul is primarily thinking about persecution and outward pressures, I don't think it's twisting the thinking of Paul to apply the same thing to your internal suffering as well. The, the sufferings of this life that are just a part of a cursed and fallen world. I think you can equally apply what he's going to say to every part of suffering throughout your life. So right now in New Zealand, we've just entered into a new lockdown. And for you, if you're a Christian, if you're a New Zealander, that might be a great cause of angst for you. It is for me. I am dreading Sunday. Not because I have to stream from my home here on Sunday, but because I won't get to go to church and be among the people of God. And that causes me great grief, great pain, great sorrow. My heart is cast down because of that. And maybe you too are facing that same reality, that same suffering. But why and how? How can that suffering that you're facing be seen as a good thing? Be seen as an object of rejoicing, joy, delight, praise, meaning, purpose. Paul tells us. He says, We rejoice in our sufferings knowing, so knowing, I am fully in knowledge in my brain and in my heart of this reality. Not blind, but a, a well-reasoned, thought through, mentally wrestled through, and sunk deep into the core of the heart, meditated upon. I know that suffering produces endurance. What is endurance? Endurance is the ability to bear up under something, isn't it? to endure, to deal with something. In other words, if you imagine you you get given a 50 kilo weight and you're told you, you must hold that weight. If you hold that 50 kilo weight for half an hour, I will give you $5,000 for that half hour. You, you hold that weight and you endure the weight of it. And as your muscles begin to creak and groan and ache and want to tear off your arms, you, you hold that way anyway, and you endure right to the end of that 30 minutes because you want the money at the end. And so Paul's saying, suffering 
produces that type of endurance. Suffering, the pain in your life, produces the ability to endure to the end. And, that, and we so need that, don't we? Who of us, who of us are confident that we will endure to the end in and of ourselves? None of us. Now, just speaking, humanly speaking here, setting aside the knowledge of the the theological idea that God holds us fast, that Jesus promises that he will not let go any of his people, yet we still need to endure. There is a both and reality here. He is holding on to us and we are holding on to him. It's not our holding on that saves us, it's him, yet we're still holding on to him and we're told to endure and run the race. How do we do that? Paul says, by suffering. Suffering is going to produce that endurance that you need. And what's endurance going to produce? He says, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. What is character? Well, it's actually probably not what we think of when we think of character. It's a really hard word to translate. If you have a look at all the different English versions, you're going to see a whole bunch of different words used. The, the word effectively means the result of testing. You know, when you test a person, You test a person with an exam, the the result that comes out the end, that's what is produced. That is what Paul is speaking about. Now, depending on the context, that context, it's going to be very different, isn't it? But Paul's saying, through your suffering, you're going to get endurance. And through your endurance, you're going to get the desired result within you that Christ wants to produce. He's going to produce godliness within you. The fruit that he longs for will be produced within you. And that fruit, that character testing, will produce hope. What is hope? Well, it's not what we tend to think of in the West. We tend to think of hope as being a wishful thinking. I really I really hope someone comes and visits me today. I really hope that I win the lotto. I really hope that I don't have a car accident. I really hope that the cancer test comes back negative, etc., etc. That's not biblical hope. Biblical hope is expectation. In other words, it's like when you go to ask your wife to marry you and you've already talked about it before. You know what I mean? If, you, if you've already talked to your girlfriend about getting married and, and you've both basically agreed, but you still need to put the ring on her finger and go through the procedure. This is what my wife and I went through. We, we already made the decision. And then I went and bought the ring and I proposed to her. It wasn't, it wasn't really, a, really a proposal. We had already agreed. But I, and so I went with hope to put the ring upon her finger. Not because I was wondering if it would happen because I knew it would happen. That's the sort of hope that gets produced through this. And what does that hope produce? Well, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hope, expectant hope in God produces the fruit of God's love in us. And here we begin to see the reality of why suffering is not evil. Suffering leads to a testimony that God loves us. You see, we say suffering is evil. And we say, how could God be doing this to me? We say, how can God be good and both, uh, how can God be both good and powerful and enable us to suffer, allow us to suffer, allow suffering in the world? The Bible says, suffering is the evidence that God loves you. You say, what? How does that make any sense? Because suffering, godly suffering, produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope, which doesn't disappoint us, but shows us that God loves us. You see, all of your suffering, all of your patient, enduring under the wrath of the world and the effects of a cursed and fallen world, every single minute and second of your suffering is working something good. And the Holy Spirit is inside you, testifying that your suffering is not 
in vain. So let me ask you, what is your suffering? What is your suffering producing today? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this glorious hope we have in suffering. We pray that it would just give us a great sense of peace and that we would be encouraged about the things that we must endure. Would you work this glorious chain of things into our lives? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks very much for joining me for another daily devotion. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon.